Well, guys, thanks for coming. We're going to get going. And uh, if there's anybody that shows up, we will just have to find a place to sit. So I'm very excited to have Corey Hardy Keys back. She's a wonderful speaker. She hasn't spoken uh, to our market center yet. Not this one, one but not this one. Not this one. Yes, in the past. And Corey's quite a master uh, with a great history, and now part of the North Group. So I will leave the rest of the introduction to you. Make sure you guys take lots of notes, and um, I'll give you the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, um, Irene. When Irene asked me uh, to come to the office. Uh, and speak and gave me the option to talk about what I wanted to talk about. Um, I decided why not uh, talk about something that I feel is the foundation of a realtor's business and something that unfortunately I think a lot of us struggle with is systematic lead gen, right? Like we hear it, we hear that we should be time blocking and putting it in our calendar, um, but why are so many of us not doing that on a regular basis? I know that's something that we struggle with with our team. Um, so I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you guys about this because I really think this is what, if you can get this right, this is what will propel you to the next level. And it sounds really simple, but so many people just aren't doing it. Sorry, can you just tell us about your group? Like, yeah, yeah, no, plan? absolutely. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in, uh, a licensed realtor since 2003, so I just in my 16th year. Um, and I started off my career downtown Toronto at Remax Condo, so I was a condo agent primarily for 11 years. Um, branded condos, lived downtown, that was great. Um, and then when I met my husband and we progressively started moving west, we got married, we were in Etobicoke, and then when we settled in Port Credit and I had my daughter, um, so my second, I said, you know what, it's time to make a change, number one on brokerage, um, number two on market. I wanted to sell in a higher price point. And I wanted to sell closer to home because I had the little kids. Um, so that will be five years ago this summer that I joined KW and Port Credit, which was probably the best business decision I ever made. Not that anything was wrong where I was, because that was very successful as well. But just being at KW just opened up a lot of opportunities and just a way of doing business I didn't think about. Uh, fast forward to early 2018, where I uh, made a decision to partner with North Group Real Estate. Um, so that's been pretty amazing. And I made that decision. I was sole agent for you know 15 years, and I made that decision because I wanted you know further, faster together. I really liked what they were doing. I saw an opportunity there, and uh, I'm like, what does my next chapter in real estate look like? Look like? So it was either partnering with my business partner in Younger, or I would just continue to do what I was doing on my own. Um, so yeah, so now um, we partner, and uh, we uh, just uh, were awarded last year by Inman, most innovative team in North America, which is pretty awesome. Wow. wow. Right? So that happened in August, which surprised us all. And um, right now we're currently sitting as the number four team in, in KW. That fluctuates from month to month, we know that, but we're pretty proud of that right this second. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and now we're just, you know, growing our, our team, and uh, yeah. How many is on your team? Um, with our admin and everything, there's probably about 20 of us. Oh, wow. No, we're expansion, right? So my business partner is in Toronto on King Street. I'm in uh, Mississauga. Like, we're, we're doing that model. Um, but we are very close. We are the GTA, so we are basically a big GTA team. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the foundation of your real estate business, which I believe is Asian. So systematic lead gen, I'd love to tell you guys that it's fun and sexy, but it's neither of those, right? So it's not fun or sexy, but it is the key to longevity in your real estate business. So how many of you are doing um, lead gen on a regular basis? I know you are. <laughs> so a few of you are, and how does that look like? Like are you? Are you scheduling it in your calendar or mm -hmm. you kind of move it, you erase it, you replace it kind of mindset? Schedule. You're scheduling it, that's, that's great. Um, and are you guys scheduling like lead gen is everything from new lead gen to follow up at once or are you um, scheduling them at different times? Different. Different times? Yeah. Um, so systematic lead gen, it's uh, the foundation of your business. It's the daily commitment you, you keep to grow and sustain your business. Um, it is so important because if you consist, if you commit, uh, you will have a real estate career. There are so many 
agents I've seen, I've been being in the business 16 years, I've seen a lot of agents come and I've seen a lot of agents go. And um, I think a lot of people, myself included, before I got into real estate, thought this was a really easy business. And then you get in and you realize actually, it's actually quite, quite difficult. Is there any new agents here? Or is everyone, right. you're new? You're new? I'm still working to get my license. You're still working to get your license? You're, you're still in the middle of your license? And everybody else is, is, has been in a few years or more? Awesome. Um, So are you in the lead gen business or are you just selling real estate? What would you guys say? I think a lot of us think of ourselves like we're selling real estate, but we're really in the lead gen business because without the lead gen, there is no business, right? Mm -hmm. Without the pipeline, mm -hmm. there are no leads, there is no money. So I think that the, the sooner we, we kind of create that mindset that we're in that kind of business. So the most successful realtors consider themselves First and foremost, lead generation, and secondly, they happen to sell real estate. So consistent lead gen that creates leverage and then creates a good quality of life. So when I say leverage, lead gen, that can create leverage. Do you guys have an idea of what I mean? It works for you? Yeah. I read. It, it, you, you created to do the work for you, so that you don't always have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Because that's what we're all looking for. And leverage comes in different ways in this business. Um, when I'm saying consistent lead gen can, um, creates leverage, what I mean is when you're consistently doing it, you have a system in place, and you've created the systems to take over your lead gen. For instance, your eight by eight for door knocking, like eight touches over eight weeks, or your action plans to put new buyers on, or whatever the case is. Um, that's where the leverage comes into place. And then, if you're growing a team, looking for talent. So if you can create those systems, and then you have the talent, that's when you have a real business. Now, not everybody needs to have a team or be on a team, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with being an independent agent as well. There's some very successful independent agents. And then when I'm talking about quality of life, um, we're talking about you can predict your business every year because you constantly know you're filling your pipeline. So I know when I'm busy, and I'm <clears throat> busy and I'm doing like a few offers or a few listings coming up, I'm always thinking, okay, who's next? And I think a lot of people get caught up in the now or the overwhelm of dealing with a handful of people at once. So I think if you get in the mindset of always kind of setting aside time to really think about who's next after I'm done with these, you're always gonna have uh, like business versus looking for it or you're having those months where you're dipping down, which I think that is a struggle with a lot of realtors. I actually have, we, our team has an agenda where we, you can put in your daily lead gen, like how many contacts you did and how many appointments you went on and that kind of stuff, so just so we can kind of track um, what we're doing. And on there we have a list for like our A people and then our B people, and I find that is huge. Even for myself, even today, I was like, because if you're doing a high level of, say, online leads and you have a lot of stuff coming in, how do you put them in priority as to who are in my now people? And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Kind of for, sometimes I forget, right? So I'll write a list of, like, my A people are these people they are going to sell and buy, sell and buy. These are B people they are kind of, like, over six months. And then I can kind of track. Can you sit here? Do any of you guys do that? Keep a list? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it can be just something you have up on your office. Like mine, honestly, it's, like it's just on a piece of paper and I, it's in like the agenda for my lead gen. And I can kind of scan it and be like, okay, this is going to translate into two uh, deals or whatever because if they're by yourself. So that's how I kind of keep track. And who doesn't want better quality of life? You know, in this business, if you don't have your systems in place, this business can really run you dry. Anyone been there? A little bit of overwhelm? So I'm reading a book right now. Have any of you guys read Millionaire Success Habits? 
Um, if you haven't, go get it. I'm currently in the middle of listening to the audiobook. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite books. And just just really to real estate, um, it's just about success in any kind of industry. Um, but what I'm, I'm going to relate it to real estate in a second. But it has like tips in there and just really good information that I'm finding really useful. So do yourself a favor, get the audiobook. Um, Called I'll Google send Google. you the link, Irene, because I think right. it's Dean something, the, the awesome. author. So, so the what, what's it called again? Uh, Millionaire <laughs> Success Habits. And I'll send Irene the link to, to the book. It's really good. So what I'm going to talk about here, it really relates to some of the stuff in the book. So the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people. Dean Graziosi. Yes. Is that successful people do what unsuccessful yeah. people don't want to do. Like, read that again. That's the secret. Successful people do what unsuccessful people don't want to do, right? Success can be boring as well, because you're consistently doing the same things, right? You're not reinventing the wheel every day. You're consistent with the things that got you successful. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people fail to realize. Um, I think there's this big magic secret. It's just really committing to those daily micro commitments that you really don't want to do, like picking up the phone or doing the cold calling or the door knocking. What kind of lead gen are most of you guys doing? Cool. Cold calling? Door knocking and cold calling. Door knocking and cold calling? We're door knocking in open houses. You're door knocking your open houses? Door knocking and open houses. And open houses. So How often are you door knocking? Uh, when the weather cooperates. <laughs> yeah. I remember when you tell us three days, days door knocker eight, 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 eight months of the year. What's that, sorry? You're door knocker eight months of the year. Yeah, um, I remember you saying that. Is that a change? We'll do January if it's above minus 10. Um, we were out uh, yesterday, <coughs> and uh, we will go out in the rain, just not mm -hmm. in a biblical storm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I was at Remax Condos, my lead gen was much different than what it is now. Um, it was online leads. A lot of online leads. That's when you could kind of like Google was. It was easier to get on the top ranking. So Toronto condos, there it was. It was a lot of that stuff. Um, also, when I was new in the business, I worked primarily with buyers, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, guys. When you're new, because they sell eventually. I still always keep a little bit of buyers in my in my portfolio. I think that's important. Um, but it used to be a lot of online leads, and now that I switched markets and I came into an area where it's different, uh, different demographic. Um, I started door knocking and cold calling, but I didn't my first 11 years in business. Um, isn't that crazy? I actually didn't think people did it. You don't know what you don't know, right? And then I came to my brokerage and I'm seeing like who the heavy hitters are in the area, who has market share, um, and then you kind of like make, you know, you kind of study them and what am I going to do different, but what am I going to incorporate that they're doing? to take some kind of market share myself. So I had to kind of like reinvent myself really when I changed markets and knock on those doors and do some cold calling um, to get some business. So that was really different. <coughs> Sorry, I, uh, the fact that I'm just starting in this business, uh, I heard you mention about it can be overwhelming sometimes mm -hmm. and that's very true. So I've read a lot of uh, real estate stuff and so just to decide whether or not it makes sense to transition over. Uh, but I find a very old book, uh, very, very good. The one you mentioned, I've not read it yet, but there's one from uh, Napoleon Hill okay. Uh, okay. called uh, Think and Grow Rich. I yes. think that's a, it's a very old book and some stuff from Pearl Nightingale. Mm -hmm. That's really, really good. I would encourage anybody to read, read that mm -hmm. book. Think and Grow Rich. I've heard one. that one. Yes. I haven't read it yet, though. And, uh, and just to keep motivated when you're just overwhelmed, just stuff like uh, people like Zig Ziglar and those guys who are extremely good to help mm -hmm. keep people motivated, I would suggest. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's all about your mindset too, yeah. right? Even though like you get, it can be a little over overwhelming in this business sometimes because there's a lot that's coming at you at once. Yes. We're wearing a lot of hats as realtors. I think that's where sometimes it's kind of like, oh, you're doing this, that, and the other thing. Um, but yes, having, you know, that mindset and uh, also um, reading good books is, is definitely helpful. And also having a little bit of a thick skin in this business, I think, you know, can beat you up a little bit as well because we all are against rejection at times. I mean, how many of you have lost a listing before or you're, you know, I think we all have, yeah. right? <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> it happens and it hurts, right? Okay, so when I'm talking about positive success, success habits, when I'm bringing it over to the real side, side of things, so success habits are behaviors and routines that you develop and you practice. 
you continually develop and you practice. So time blocking, if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. I'm sure you know that's something that a lot of us say, but it's so, so true. Um, one of the things I was realizing with our team was we had a whole like team calendar at one time where on Tuesdays we door knock and on this day we do that and we're not doing that anymore. But what I realized with that is we weren't giving, people weren't giving themselves enough time to lead gen and follow up. They're trying to do the lead gen, the follow up and the stuff all at once. And when I say the stuff, I'm talking about setting up that prospect match, doing that CMA, like just the stuff that kind of trickles into our day. Um, one of the you know things that I strongly suggest everybody start doing is separating those things. Have your, when I say lead gen, I'm talking about new lead gen, cold calling, door knocking, um, you know, we're, online leads that you're just getting in touch with for the, for the first time. I'm not talking about nurturing or following up. That has to be separate. So it's like two hours of lead gen or whatever the case is, you know, your 45 minutes of follow up or whatever it is, and then you have to block time in your day for your stuff. Like I have a notepad and when I'm working with my lead gen and you know stuff pops in your head, I'll write it down. Oh yeah, I was just with that person in the password match, I forgot. Or, and then I do it during my stuff later on because that stuff can, you know, doing that stuff right then can derail your lead gen. So time blocking, um, practicing your buyer and seller presentations. I think I'm finding a lot, a lot of agents are guilty of not doing this or not really even having a presentation. Um, knowing your presentation inside and out, especially if you're a new agent, get help, put something together, leverage your brokerage. They will help you put something together. If you don't have the stats, you can piggyback on their stats. If you're on a team, then you're probably going to have access to the team's listing presentation and buyer presentation. Learn those inside and out. Like, practice those. With that becomes confidence, and with that, you can go into any situation and be prepared. I'm just amazed about how many agents just don't do that. They practice on their clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're trying to, we're, we're going heavy on this with our team um, to make sure that we're really, that, that that's the goal right there. Being persistent. So uh, in this business, as you know, um, we're not always respected in the public's eyes. We're salespeople. So it's all about winning over their trust, showing them value. And you, when you first talk to someone, I'm sure you know if you're like calling an online lead, they can kind of have their back up against the wall, right? Until you say the right things to kind of pivot the conversation and you're building rapport and trust. But a lot of people give up too soon. You have to keep trying, going back in another round, round, have grit. If someone has responded to a text, email, or we've had a phone conversation that's been any indication of them moving, I will continually follow up until they tell me not to or they do so, you know. But I think a lot of agents give up too soon. I was going to say, especially open houses, a lot of people, mm -hmm. A, have a myth that they don't like it or people hate them and so they're yeah. nervous about it. And if you just do it in a way that makes them comfortable mm -hmm. and give information or aren't so pushy yeah. and then just keep continually following up. So many people are like, you're the only one that's followed up. You yeah. have a choice. Also, it's um, being more like yourself, being true to who you are. I think sometimes we get too scripty or we're trying to be someone we're not. I find the more I'm myself when I knock on the door, I talk to someone, the better it is. Um, I got a listing recently. Three years ago, I door knocked their house and I just stayed in touch with like my mailer or my newsletter, my calendar at Christmas. Not over the top with calls, to be honest. And then they called me in for the listing presentation and I got it. I signed it that night. And once we were signing and I said, I asked them, why did you decide to have me in tonight? And they said, you were the only one out of everyone that we've been door knocked and cold called like all the time. You're the only one that stayed in touch and was persistent. So it matters. It makes a difference. So when I say persistence, like that, you definitely need that in real estate. You have, that's where the thick skin comes in. You have to kind of put your, I don't want to call. They haven't come back. Just go. Have, some, have a reason to call. Hey, this just on your street. I thought of you. I was driving by your building. Stuff like that, right? Just to you know, to reconnect with them. Um, having a vision and knowing your why. So it's just like when you're you're you know in your car and you have your GPS. You don't have a destination. Where are you going? You're kind of driving around. A lot of us don't know what our vision is or what our why is, and I challenge all of you guys to really think about that. Um, is you know what is my vision with my business really think about like where you see yourself say in a year or two years how does that look how do you look how does your business look like and then why it's important for you 
to be successful or why are you doing this and you have to kind of like actually the book millionaire success habits has um a little thing in there that helps you with that that's really important getting really clear on what that is or else i find that if we don't know we're kind of running around in circles we don't really know where we want to go what we want to do um, ignoring the noise in the face of rejection, that literally talks about the thick skin again. Um, for me, that also means shutting out the noise in the industry. I'm very, I know exactly what my vision is with my team. I know what my why is. So it doesn't matter what anybody says on the outside because I'm very focused. I think we can get really derailed sometimes with what other people say or even the rejection from a client and social media. We can get caught up in like what others are doing. So you really have to be um, yeah, but you have to ignore that noise. How do you cope up the rejection? Pardon? How do you cope up the rejection? Right? Sometimes like uh, we have like continuously two, three weeks uh, off, right? So yeah. We get a lot of rejection. So you're going through two, th two to three weeks of yeah. constantly being rejected? Yeah. It happens. We've all been there. Just take it. Take the nose like vitamin. Right? Just take it like take it uh, as motivation. Right? Yeah. That's okay. There's sometimes that people that happens like I can, there's been times where I've done open houses and there's nothing's really happened and I've been for like months and then all of a sudden you meet two people and you sell and help them buy. You just have to keep, that's going back in another round and just keep going. Even when you don't feel like it, you just have to keep going. There's a lot of rejection in this business, right? It's agree. better with time though. Huh? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> you mean your rejection gets Yeah, it should get all the all the Oh, I thought you meant the At rejection the beginning. gets less. No, no, no. 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 Oh, I don't know. It's like it's part less. of the game. It's not that big a deal anymore. At the beginning, it's like, oh my god. I think at the beginning, a lot of us. It's warm in this room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the beginning, I think a lot of us um, think this is going to be easy, right? I'm going to come into the business and I'm going to have all this business and leads. And then you get, unless you have a network, you get in there and you're like, hello, anyone want to buy or sell? I know that's how I felt. And then it's like, okay, I'm constantly, you're, you're hunters in this business. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say it, but. You know, when you're in the business, 16 years in the business, yes, some, you know, stuff comes and past clients and referrals. I hunt every day for the most part. What do you mind sharing your big why? Um, my big why is, is based off my family and my kids, right? Opportunity. And the question to Dean is persistent. You said that uh, one of the clients that you were in touch with that guy uh, in the last three years. So, like, yeah. every month you send me that, right? So they were a door knocking lead, and then so what I do with door knocking leads, this is a whole other course. <laughs> We've done this All right. before. But door knocking leads, uh, so Keller Williams has something called, well, 8x8, eight eight, but you create your own. So it's eight touches over eight weeks. So your first touch is at the door, your second touch is a handwritten card. It's that, yeah. phone call, whatever it is, yeah. setting stats, setting past sales. I, sometimes I push it every two weeks if I if they're not moving for a while, but it's a consistent like touch basis for the first while. And then from there, once the eight weeks is done, I can kind of gauge, okay, am I gonna stay in touch with them or whatnot? So I do a monthly newsletter letter with my database with mission response, but there's like Mark Morris Marketing has one. It's just like a newsletter. I'll put them on to that. So they're getting the direct mail monthly and then it's it's like a system. I don't it's like a plug and play. I don't have to worry about it. So they're constantly getting a touch every month, mm -hmm. and then if I have their email, they're gonna get anything that goes out in the database. Sometimes we usually send like a monthly newsletter, that like the emailed one is more um, customized to the team, so like new listings or you know something we've done in the community. Um, and then at Christmas, I'll do like a desk calendar, so that just, I get my assistant to send it at everyone that's on the direct mail, so they're getting touched. And apart from that, the person who didn't have an email, like those people, uh, but they're planning to I never had their email. Yeah, so like they uh, weren't getting emails from me, they were just getting stuff in the mail. Oh, mail through mail, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got to figure it out, figure it out what it is for you. If you can get people's email, that's great because then you can just do it from your inbox. Like, we do have an 8 by 8 action plan that we've created in our database that we can put them on, and then it will remind you, like, oh, this is the week that you're supposed to send sales around the house. You just have to really slow down to speed up. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of you have to create it, and you have to create it based on like the demographics of your needs or your business and the area. And when you're out there door knocking and cold calling stuff, you gotta ask for the information too. You have to ask for their. Well, if you're cold calling, you already have their phone number, but ask for the email. 
We send out a market report monthly. We'd love to stay in touch with you. What's your email address? Just ask for it. So the three types of lead gen, um, there's tiers. There's three tiers of lead gen. And I find, and the reason I wanted to talk, we just talked about this with the team, but the reason I wanted to, I, I feel very passionate about this, is I see a lot of agents getting stuck in one category, and it's typically the new lead gen. So they're constantly trying to get new business, but they're not really nurturing. Or they're door knocking consistently a few times a week, but there's just no follow-up system in place. Um, that's really, you're spinning your wheels if you don't have a system in place. Because it's very rarely someone will, it's usually the follow-up that gets me the business versus just that initial thing at the door, right? Oh, we connected, they're gonna call. Very rarely will they. It's kind of like what happens after. Um, so I see a lot of agents in my office, they're, 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 they're doing the activity for the new lead gen, but then they're not really following up with the nurture because they just haven't set up a system. So new lead gen. So, when I'm talking about new lead gen, I'm not talking about follow-up. So we're talking about whatever it is for you guys. I know we all have different businesses, but it could be cold calling, could be door knocking, it could be some people are into networking and events. That is definitely something that I've incorporated since going to KW, just because that's in my area, that's what I'm doing. Um, it could be online leads. Some people, like we have some people on our team that are new that they just want online leads, right? Um, so it could be any of those, but it's not follow-up. So it's filling your pipeline. So when you're newer in the business or you're, you know, you're not as busy as you should be, you're more in filling up the pipeline with new lead gen, right? As you get busier, right, you have the leads on the go, you might, you still should be doing this, but you're transiting, you're over in a different category, it might be the nurturing or the conversion. Is anyone doing any other types of new lead gen outside of this list? Open house. Yep. Yep. Yeah, open house would definitely be one. Open houses are hugely successful. Calling past clients for referrals. Not really cold calling, mm -hmm. warm calling. That's more nurture. That's more database calling. That would more be like either kind of like nurture or follow up. It's important though. Mm -hmm. I know. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So up here, I heard someone say this uh, recently on a panel, get involved with your where you're invested, right? So before I was a Keller in Port Credit, I was downtown, it was more like urban, young professionals, first time buyers, nobody wanted to really meet. It was really like kind of like fast and just different. And then when I went to KW and I changed markets and I kind of had to like reinvent myself, it was definitely more relationship based. Um, so, and also I had two little kids as well, so I'm like, let me get involved at in my kids' school and go on um, the community association where I'm now a community ambassador, which is fits ties in with what I'm doing. Um, let me do invest, let me get invested in like some other things in the community, and that's really what I've done. So that's not for everybody though. You're into open houses, like somebody could be into whatever it is, their church, whatever it is, right? But really, when you have passion about where it is makes a big difference. So I love that. Get involved where you're invested. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Okay, so this is talking about new lead gen. We've talked about this, so, so this stuff. So filling your pipeline, um, that's what you're doing. You wanna constantly make sure that you have new people coming in. It's like a rotation, essentially. Um, when I say micro commitments, I think we really sometimes get overwhelmed with what our end goal is. So for instance, say it's, I wanna make 250,000 in GCI this year. And that sounds so far out of reach it's like, how do you break that down into micro-commitments where it doesn't feel so <laughs> overwhelming? Um, stuff like the 411, which I could probably do here with the office, where it's like, four, you know, you have your goals for the year and then you break it down into four weeks, wait, let me get this straight. Four weeks, one month, wait, what is it? Four one weeks, year. one month, one year. One year, yes. We do this often with our team. It really gets you clear on things and then you break it down into weekly goals and it seems much more achievable. 
Um, so micro commitments that are really going to propel you to the next level. Can you give a couple examples? If it's a Monday, what would your team say? It's, we've got your yearly, we've got your monthly, but then you're down to the Oh, what would it be like, say, for instance, on the 411? Yeah. It would really depend on what the big goals are, right? Like some people on our team, it could be anywhere from um, working on my referral mm -hmm. business or um, we do personal and then, well, or business and then personal. So it could be anything like I want to go more, I want to go on a trip to Greece, I want to lose 10 pounds, whatever the case is. And then you're breaking it down into more achievable weekly goals. Mm -hmm. Or you do personal too. Do we do. That's cool. I think it also helps when your team building to kind of like get to know your team yeah. members yeah. more. Honestly, one before it was just business, but we have incorporated the personal side of it as well. I think that's important. And then you, you understand what their why what their why is clear. Mm -hmm. We talked about this already. So lead gen versus follow up or the stuff. I know for me personally, there are times where I've gotten like really overwhelmed and like there's just too much stuff. I gotta do this CMA, I gotta put this person on a prospect match, there's this happening, there's, you're getting dinged, you're getting emailed, right? There's a lot happening nowadays. I think with all the technology that was supposed to help us has really made us a lot more accessible to people and then in turn you feel that we need to, like I'm talking about myself, we need to respond. So it's really about shutting off that noise and really focusing on either your lead gen and you're scheduling your follow up at every time. Um, and then your stuff. So I, like I said before, I'll have like a notepad like this when I'm doing, say, cold calls. And you're talking, you're having a great conversation, and then I'll write down like, okay, go send a handwritten note to this person and set them up on a prospect match. Bam, on to the next call. But if I stop right then and start doing that stuff, then I've just derailed my whole lead gen. Oh, setting them up on collab, whatever it is. Oh, okay. oh, them, yeah, it depends. Uh, how many people here use collab? Okay. Yeah. I just have to I, I use the auto, but I, I, use the auto. I just have to figure something out because so, um, I sent something to a client, but then she said something's our password, so I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then how many people use Stratus to put their searches on? Yeah. Sorry, I did the survey with our team this morning because I really haven't used Collab all that much, to be honest with you. And then like I find a lot of the newer ranges. <laughs> They're on collab, and, I'm, and then I tried to use it. I got a little overwhelmed with it. I was like, well, wait a sec. I just know how to use Stratus. Mm -hmm. um, it's not super user friendly. Which one? Collab. Oh, yeah, and I then when I, I don't know what the Stratus password oh, thing is. Stratus is fine. It's just there's no interaction. Right? And you get it the next day. That's the only thing, too. You, they, well, yeah, they, they grab it, they send it like at one in the morning. What I, so what the, what the team, oh, I should read it to you guys, but what the team was saying today, we have a chat that we do on mm -hmm. Asana, um, on a Slack story where we can all talk all the time. Um, they were saying you could send just an invite, so they're searching on their own. It's like a Facebook of real estate, right? Mm -hmm. You can see what they're looking yeah. at. You can see when they've opened it. Um, so you can set up, you can set them up on Stratus, and then just send them an invite to Collab to kind of search on their own. Um, some people set up a search on both to say like Stratus is more wide, so Collab's more. Forget the word, but specific. yeah, that would be it. So I'm like, okay, I gotta take some time to learn this. Yeah. So that, was, that was just out of curiosity, yeah. really. If anybody wants, Treb offers like mini yeah. seminar training. I think I need to go I went to the collaborate one. It was oh. really, I think oh. I need to go. Really good. So I think it's at maybe the an hour or two. Yeah. I know there's one agent at Keller Williams that Urban referred, and that's all she's doing. She no. sets everybody up on her lab, and she's. Oh, um, mm. um, uh, I can't remember. Did she set them up in searches? Because you can just send them an invite as well. Yeah, that's what I had. So then she follows up and she says, oh, I saw you were looking yep. at this and that. And, and that she's only by a... She focuses on buyers. Yes, Another thing someone buyers. said on our team today is you can set up so you receive an alert before your client. Yep. So you can see, receive an instant right. alert, alert or every six hours or daily or something. Mm -hmm. So you can put your client on like a daily mm -hmm. one, but you can do like an instant. So you can be able to say, hey, this just came up and you look like the real estate hero. But you can do yeah. that. You, you can yeah. completely yeah. control yeah. all the alerts. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that through the buyer registry as well. Okay. So if you yeah. if you put them on the buyer registry, you could do hourly notification. Okay. Except then it creates a second prospect match. Mm -hmm. So you've got the regular prospect match yeah. and the buyer registry mm -hmm. prospect match. It's a little confusing. I know. I tried. I tried. I've tried it before, and it, I just you know I need to take some time to focus on this. 
Um, but when I talk about the lead gen follow up or the stuff, I, I was um, I'm in the middle of doing an event with a mortgage broker. Um, we're doing like a huge community yard sale this weekend, which has been pretty awesome. We have 20 houses signed up. But anyway, she's collaborating with me. She does really well. Um, she uh, has her own mortgage broker team. And uh, we were just kind of like bouncing ideas about team building and keeping teams accountable and all that stuff. And she did a session recently with her team. Um, she's not new to the industry, about 12 years being a mortgage broker, but she's new to this new company, Mortgage Coach. So she's gone in there, she's doing great. She's surpassing people that have been in the business longer than her, um, that are uh, older than her. So there's people going, well, what is she doing? So she did a session just to kind of talk about her day, her daily routines. Um, and that's where I was like, our team isn't getting, they're not scheduling enough time in a day to do what they need to do. So her day consists of four hours outside of the office. So her four hours, she tries to do three coffees a day. That's a lot of coffee. I'm not suggesting anybody do that. That's her, that's her thing. So she's going to do coffee with people like me or other realtors. Maybe she's, uh, whoever she can partner with. Um, maybe she's doing a session like this in a brokerage. She's outside of the office and really just talking to people, right? We could be out door knocking, we could be doing networking events, we could be doing open houses, like everyone was saying, right? Get out and move around. Then she schedules two hours to come back to the office to do kind of like that stuff, that handwritten card, whatever it is, all that other stuff that needs to be done and is super important, um, but she's scheduling it outside. And I thought that was really motivating. So I'm like, so four hours and then two hours, that's six hours a day. How many hours are we really, a lot of us, like well, putting into real estate? Like I know I put in at least six hours and sometimes more, depending. But I think there's a lot of people that are just kind of plugging in and plugging out. So just really, and some people that I've noticed on our, you know, on our team as well, they're, they're kind of there and then they're gone, you don't know what they're doing for the rest of the day. So it's like, let's get really clear on our calendar and what that consists of. So let's separate those two, right? So how do I nurture? I think this is the part that, one of the parts um, that people struggle with. Um, if you don't have a system in place for your nurturing of your leads, then this isn't going to work. So you want to take time to really think about all your forms of lead gen. So if it was a cold calling lead, your nurture may be different than if it's like a door knocking or if it's an online buyer. So you gotta really get clear on the type, like we usually have three to five pillars of where our business comes from. So whether it's cold calling, door knocking, online leads, past clients, referrals or open houses, whatever it is, you don't necessarily need five, but you need at least three and getting really clear on what the follow up is with those three and systemizing it. So a game changer for me, before I partnered with North Group and I was getting into the cold calling stuff and I was doing MAPS coaching at the time, is my coach said, you need to slow down to speed up, or I'm like, no, there's no time to slow down. I'm speeding up here. But I really had to take a step back and get really clear on, on my business. Um, but he's like, you need to systemize. We were doing door knocking, how do we at that time? You need to systemize it and have your assistant do it. So we would, um, Every Friday, she would block time, and it would be noted like what touch. Like it's week two, and she'd know to send out the week two thing. So we literally got like a folder, which was like week one, week two, week three, and she knew which to choose from. Like they were pre-written things, and we just—it doesn't matter what it is. We just we systemized it to make it easy. So it was easy just to pull the week, put it in the mail. Yes, we did that task, and we're on to the next one. Um, if you're doing online leads or even seller leads, where they're online is doing action plans that you can set up, up, them up on that are automatic and that sound real, not cheesy. There's good ones you can do nowadays. They grab their name and everything um, and also they'll schedule a reminder for you. Uh, are you guys all using like a, a CRM? What's the one that's most popular? Just curious, there's so many I know. I'm just using Google. You're using Google? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm using real world. Okay, yeah, I've heard of them. Which one? Real Golf? I we use... Uh, I exact. Exact? Yeah. I used to use that. Who do you want now? Follow up boss. So we're on top producer. We okay. haven't changed since 1992. 
Yeah. 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 Until, until command takes over 100%, yeah. Yeah. we'll just stay on there. So, yeah. it doesn't matter who your CRM is, to yeah. be as long as you make the reference. You use yeah. it. Commit to it and learn it. And I know top producer can be a little shocking. I know, from what I hear, I've never used it. Um, but figure it out and use the elements of it that are most important. Right, but there's so many options. What we like about follow-up uh, boss is um, I can text from it. So I can like, like right when I'm on the system, I can send them a text, but I'm really typing, so I like that. Um, I can see if they've opened an email or clicked on the link. So that's pretty good when you're sending them something. Um, we, can met, we can monitor our team's follow-up or stuff in the system, like their speed to leave, that kind of stuff. Really important when you have a team. Speak to me. Yeah, so how quickly they're responding. We can round robin stuff on there. So if we have like um, a listing and leads coming in, you can kind of have them go from that person to that person, which is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty simple, which is good. I don't want, want anything too extravagant. Mm -hmm. I think what else does. It's great. Do we know? It syncs. It syncs to from our, the website, so the lead comes in there, and automatically goes in there, automatically puts them on an action plan, automatically text messages them, and then eventually, and you can schedule the text message, like if it's after 10 p.m., don't send it out till the next day, so it doesn't look like weird mm -hmm. you're responding at three in the morning, because it's automatic. You can do those kind of things, or if it's during the day, don't send a text for five minutes instead of instantly, just so it seems a bit more real. Those are some of the functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your nurture stage, you know, patience and, um, and being persistent. So like I told you guys, like the door knocking in like three years. And it actually happened again um, in my area. I was circle prospecting probably about two years ago, a listing. A listing that I actually never ended up selling because this was 2017 and the market shifted. Like literally, they bought with me, we, we listed, and it's like, it's like that day it shifted. And I actually couldn't, I didn't, wouldn't, wasn't able to sell the house. We had to rent it so they could close. We're still in touch. Um, anyways, I circle prospected the street during that time and I met the neighbor, a bunch of other people. Uh, we had a great conversation. Stayed in touch, again, eight by eight, onto my database, direct mail, getting the calendar. I get an email one day and I don't even think we have, I gave them, we exchanged emails at that time, but they must've looked me up or it was on my flyer or something. So they emailed me saying that, uh, you know, hey, thanks for staying in touch. Uh, we were considering building, but it's so expensive, the cost of building now. So now we're thinking of selling my property, my girlfriend's property, and buying one. Huh. Hello. <laughs> Which is what we just did. Wow. So I just sold her property in High Park. They just bought with me in Lauren Park. They closed July. And I'm going to sell his house, which is right beside the house I didn't sell. So guess what else also going on the market when they go on the market? So I had to like call my past. This just happened. This all just happened. Oh, I'm telling you this. So I had to call my pa my client who you know can get a bit tricky if you don't sell a property, even though it's not your fault, right? Oh, okay. So I had to like I sent them a message just saying like, hey, I hope you're all well, whatever. You're never gonna believe it. I'm selling your neighbor's property, and if you guys, I know you've had trouble selling, and they did try to sell with another agent, and they didn't sell either. Very well known anyway. Yeah. So it was yeah. It felt better for me, but. It wasn't me. Um, this is an opportunity to go up at the same time because developers like those lots and they're all buying, they're building the semis right now, right on the street. So they're going to go up with us. What yeah. street is it? Wow. It's a street in my area. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's in like the border of Lakeview Port Credit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I'll let you know once we're like officially on. Like we're aiming for August. So that comes into being patient, but also being persistent. Right? I think a lot of us are looking for the now business. A lot of my business is from like a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Yes, sometimes you get the now, but a lot of my stuff is like, I just listed something on Harbor Square. Or they're from like 18 months ago and we just connected off realtor.ca, like stay in touch with people, set up systems, show value. I think it's even more rare to have now business. Yes, yeah. yeah. it, it's kind it of like is. it's 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 such a gift. You actually meet somebody and they're ready to do something. Yeah. I think it's it's very 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 rare. Mm -hmm. I've I've had a lot of like five year, ten year, fifteen year mm -hmm. business. Sure. Uh, this week, uh, I listed my record, 1994. That was when I started talking to him, wow. Wow. and it was from Dornan. 
and you've never done any other business together. That's awesome. That's 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 inspiring. But like you know, to your point, and Robin and I literally just had this discussion yesterday. Not to say that people are going to take this long, but if somebody says. I'll eventually move, and sure, I'll consider you. There's no reason not to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Eventually, everybody has to sell a house. Mm -hmm. They get married, they get divorced, they have a baby, they move they from die. the city, or they die. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. eventually, everybody mm -hmm. has to sell that house. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says to you, I like you, let's stay in touch, like, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So simple, right? But Amazing. I think so many people are impatient. Um, I've seen a lot of new agents come into the business or even onto our team, and there's a lot of impatience there. You cannot measure success in six months. How can you, right? Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people, what I, I really notice that is like we're just not being patient enough to see the results through. But if you commit to those micro commitments and you do the work daily, the results will come. They'll come, and when they come, they come. That might lead into something that I think you were going to talk about, yep. which is um, sort of uh, you know putting the seeds down to you know keeping positive, but you put the seeds down and you've not seen anything go through it. So it's it's how you keep that kind of. Yeah, I mean, every time I'm out doing something, you're kind of setting the seeds for later. Like, you know, oh, I don't want to do up today, or I don't want to do this event, or whatever the case is. You're, you're setting the seeds to have meet somebody here. It's always for later. I'm never thinking of it as right now. It's always setting the seeds for future business. So how do you get to the point of con the conversion part? Like we're you know, there's next. one thing which is, that's why I say it's sort of leading into yeah. it. Yeah, like, nurture, nurture, and some you're going to always nurture. But some then there's always some that's nurture. Like, when is it that you might be actually missing the boat in the nurturing part to the conversion? When you're spending too much time on the new lead gen, when your pipeline is full and you need to spend a bit more time on conversion. A lot of agents get stuck in the keep adding to the database, but they're not nurturing properly. That's where they get stuck. Um, so you got to know when, you know, sometimes like a newer agent or someone that's not busy might be more in the new lead gen, where right now I am more in like kind of nurture convert because I have just so much in the pipeline. So you have to know when to move to the next level or, okay, you know what, now i got to get back into like, i got to get back heavy on the new lead gen. So you're always, you're constantly going through the three tiers. Yeah. Right? But it's not. Think sometimes I'm, for some of the things that I'm nurturing, I might be using it to actually convert. It's asking yeah. the right questions too. It's asking the right questions. If passive, it doesn't work. And then you wonder why they work with another yeah. agent because the other agent's asking like, specifics and all yeah, the things that are yeah. I think sometimes we're afraid to ask yeah. the question because we're we're scared what the, re the response is going to be. I don't want to ask for the business. I don't want to seem too pushy. You have to ask for the business, mm -hmm. right? Hey, you mentioned um, you know you were thinking of moving at the end of summer, I wanted to follow a circle back with you and see if that's still the timeline. Um, interest rates have gone down, wanted to let you know about this, or it could be this just sold in your area, on your street, I wanted to share this sale with you. By the way, you had meant, I always refer, like, take your notes and your CRM so you know what to speak about, but it's okay to like ask, a lot of them are curious about the market, they don't really understand where the market's at or what's going on in it, they just see what's on the news and we know how misleading that can be. Well, the news can be so misleading, so you have to understand the public, um, we need to educate them on really what's going on. So if you come from a place of contribution and value, that's what makes you stand out, right? If you can come from a place of value and they, they can see that, that's where the magic is. You're not just being like any other realtor and like sending generic stuff, like some of the generic stuff works, it's a touch, but you, like, to really be a real person and show the value, that's what makes the difference. And they see that. And contrary to what you're saying, especially for new people, if you don't have anything, just find something that's sold in their area, down the street, there's always something. Mm -hmm. And send that, and just say, I thought you know, you'd be interested. What are your thoughts on the price? Mm -hmm. And you get this, mm -hmm. and they're so happy, because you're giving them something. They don't Absolutely, the absolutely. Like right now with our community art sale they're we're doing, we're, doing. Um, we're calling old door locking leads in the area to say like, hey, you know, it's been a while, and I catch up, whatever. Hey, just let you know we're doing this yard sale in the area, we're paying for all marketing, make sure good exposure. Do you think, if you think this is, you know, if you want to participate, or if you know someone else that does, it gave us a reason to make the calls. But right now, last night, my assistant set up 50 directional signs in our farm. Well, you're going to know we're having a yard sale. <laughs> it's amazing, right? 
they're all set up, which is great. We've already signed it, and then um, so that gave us a. You have to think about you know what it is. That might not work downtown. It depends on your area, right? Works in my area. Where's the money? <laughs> that's the first thing we should be thinking about every single day. Not the fire that's burning in our email address. Trust me, there's always something burning in that email. Um, there's always, you know, you're putting out something in real estate. Sometimes I think I should be a firefighter. Like you're like, fire, fire, fire. Like you're always dealing with emotions and clients, right? You have to really think about your most important thing. And I really strongly believe it should be at the beginning of the day. That's when we, are, that's when we have the most momentum. That's when we have less things coming at us. If you can get your most important thing done at the beginning of the day, the rest of the day just goes easier. So I typically do not book appointments before 1 p.m. My mornings are like blocked for where's my money kind of stuff. So that's whether that's follow-up or leisure, whatever it is for that day, I've thought about it the night before with who I'm calling, what I'm doing, and then I make sure um, I'm making those calls or doing those activities in the morning. So. So this is a conversion stage. So are we giving ourselves enough time to actually convert? Or are we stuck in new lead gen, constantly trying to put in new leads in here, but not really taking the time to, to, to get back in touch with them? How many of you have door knocked and then you've driven by and you see sign, a sign up where you have? I'm just like, holy moly, if I had just really stayed in touch with this person, that was what else. We've all been there, right? When we're just not putting the time. So my advice to you guys is really separating that new lead gen from the nurturing and making sure that you have your action plans or whatever it is you're setting your people up that you remember to follow up. Like some people that I know are far, far out, I'll usually do a quarterly. I know they're going to get the monthly email newsletter if I have an email, or they're at least going to get the mailed out newsletter. But I'll call every quarter. Hey, I was thinking about you. I was just in your area. Hey, did you hear this sold? Or are you planning still this? How? Last time I talked, you said your daughter was having a baby in a few weeks. Like you have to reference what you spoke about the last time. Exactly. And that makes a really big difference. So make sure you're giving yourself the the time to convert. Know when to ask for the business. So I think this is where it gets a bit tricky because. We don't know when to ask for the business or we're afraid to ask for the business. So having, knowing the right questions, like scripting with someone. Do you guys do that here? Do you guys do the scripting? Uh, not, like not as an office. We've got some, some scripting partners. Like some we scripting are working partners. on yeah. having something yeah. in the office for the mornings. Okay, yeah, so important. So we have a sales director now on our team and we're going heavy on this with our agents um, where you know if someone needs a bit more help, we'll help you with like, hey, let's tape some of your calls and help you with your scripting and when to pivot. Because you have to know when to pivot when you're on a call or you're talking to someone to kind of smoothly move to the next step, right? So I think that's where we win um, that, that skill set. The same thing as like practicing your presentations when I spoke about that under success habits. That's the same thing. That's actually right there in presentations is your scripting, your responses, um, doing objections with people, that kind of stuff. And then as you, if you come from a mindset of contribution and value, you don't feel like you're bothering the person. They reached out to me. They told me they were going to move in a year. I have some great news to share that's going to potentially affect the time frame of when they want to move or whatever. So I think um, people struggle with that. I don't want to bother them. I just wonder if anyone here has like indoor knocking, like you go to the door and then they'll say, like you'll try and get like the contact or whatever, and they'll say, well, I'll, I have to ask my husband. I have to ask my husband if he wants. It happens, that. right? <laughs> Is there a way to handle that objection? Objection? Or? I don't know. Who would you say, Irene? I don't know if I've gotten that one a lot. How about your second yeah, husband? A cold call. <laughs> <laughs> Get a boyfriend? <laughs> no, like you have to ask well, the other person if they want that. I, I will only ask for contact information if there's a reason to. Yeah. Well, yes. Right. So, yeah. would you like to know about any sales in the area? Uh, yeah. If when, when you move, do you have someone who will look after you? After you, will take care of you. But great, would you mind if I called you in a year or something like mm -hmm. that? Like, mm -hmm. I think it's asking you, the right question is giving them the comfort level to release that information. Right. I think that's really what it is. Because yeah. they, you know, unfortunately, realtors have a stereotype. 
and they're scared. They don't want to be bombarded with us. They don't want to have that call every week and then you knocking on their door, so they just want to keep you at a distance. I think that's that was just an objection. I really like those questions though. And if you're really you're going stuck, to a place of value. Yeah. And if you're really, really stuck and you can't get anywhere, say, you know what, here's my card. Yeah, exactly. Give me a call, then you come back in yeah, two months yeah. for three months. Yeah, and it's right. a, hand, a handwritten card. It's yeah. so nice to speak with then you. Then you just yeah. come back. Right? Like, don't expect that yeah. they will call you. Because like you, know you said, I got yeah, you have to earn the right to ask. But like, you really do. Like, mm -hmm. You really do. There was someone that came through my open house a, f um, a few years ago, and we really connected in the open house. She had just been listed with a big broker in my area and had expired. Um, she was... The market had shifted, so it was back in the summer of 2017. She didn't sell, we're talking like a $2 million listing. Um, she gave me the address, but she wouldn't give me her contact information. Because again, she was just kind of like, eh. And she was with her boyfriend, and he was like, just give it to her. But I had her address, so I, and I had my laptop on. So I was able to pull up her listing right with her there, and I saw who the agent was, saw the listing, had her address, had her name. But she didn't want to give me her phone number. She's like, I'll be in touch, whatever. So this was like summertime. So I sent her like a card. I did the whole maybe eight by eight with her. Nothing. Then I got my assistant to find her phone number. I did that. Yes. This is like four months later. Um, but I didn't leave a. I didn't. Did I call her? I think I might have called, but I didn't leave a message. Um, I might have left. I might have left a message. February rolls around now. I had met her in like. July. Now we're talking about the next year in February. And I knew she had said, I'm going to hold off right now until the spring. So I sent her um, all the sales because there had been sales around her. So the market's picking up. It's changing. So I sent her like the sales that were happening in the area and a, a little booklet on the team. Like here, like not our listing presentation, but probably more of like our pre-list. I got a call from her. Listed her house, um, sold it, and she bought with me as well. She never asked me how I got her phone number. <laughs> I was, uh, she, she never did. She never did, right? But yeah, I was like, right? Nobody connected. She was just kind of nervous about being bombarded with somebody, right? But I was like persistent. I'm like, nope, we connected. Staying in touch. You said the springtime. No one to ask for the realness. And if you have a family, then how do you deal with this kind of client? I had one client. I yeah. set up an appointment with me, uh, with me uh, <coughs> about like one and a half months ago, <coughs> and then they had a gap in the family, okay. and then they go back home. That happened with me as well recently. Yeah, so how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, you have to be respectful <laughs> that a death happened, so yeah. you don't want to be over the top. Yeah. I have a situation like that as well. Um, her son died, actually, so it really changed everything, and then it's kind of like awkward, right? So um, you could every maybe, like, maybe in four months send out, like, I was just thinking of you, how are you doing? But I would kind of keep real estate outside of it. Yeah, you have to be careful. You really have to be careful with that one. Mm -hmm. But I think just kind of like a little check-in. But you have to make sure you give them appropriate time. Mm -hmm. um, I love this one. <coughs> I heard it on a podcast <coughs> recently. Um, when you gen when you know how to generate, you don't tolerate. When we're in this business and we're hungry for the next deal because we're not busy, we'll take anything that comes at us. Right? We've all been there and you're working with someone you don't like or it's hard, right? When you know how to generate and convert, you're not going to tolerate those kind of clients. Why? Because your pipeline's full. You don't have to. You don't have to. That's when this business gets good. If you can consistently lead gents, your pipeline's over owns full, you don't have to tolerate any. I won't say it. Mm -hmm. um, so she was doing a podcast and she was coming from a listing presentation. The person had been listed with two other people, um, didn't work out, so you're kind of like, why didn't it work out? Going in there and she said, you know, although, yes, she's interviewing me and she thinks she's interviewing, right? I'm also interviewing her to make sure she's a fit and that we can help her. They ended up taking the listing, the lady was really great, and they sold the property, but she said that at the end, you know, when you know how to lead, Jen, when you, know how, when you know how to generate, you'll tolerate, and I love that. How true is that? It's very true. Mm -hmm. Right? Anything. In anything in life. That's a good place to be. Because when you're in this business and, it's in, and you're, you're, you're just like living deal to deal and we've all been there, that's when it's not fun. That's when it's hurtful in this business. Um, successful people have a core set of habits that propel them. But the average person confuses success with luck. 
but Locke has, that was my revision, nothing to do with it. The harder we work, the less we get. Yeah. And people kind of confuse that. I've heard it, right? It's like actual luck is actually nothing to do with it. I think he always says that. Right? Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. um, you can share the presentation with everyone, with the other, I guess I'm going her, with the edit edited one. It's the edited one, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Success funds, actually. Any ahas? It sounds really simple, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. so many people struggle with it. Because it's simple, not easy. Because it's simple, it's not easy. And we're not giving, we're not committing, we're not really, really committing, or we're not treating this like a true business, right? So it's like, why don't we reflect on really what we're putting, what you put, what I love, what I love about this business is what you put into it, you get out of it. I can make as much money as I want. I love that. There's no ceiling. I don't like rules. I don't want ceilings. I want to do what I want and be able. That's what really excites me about real estate. I love selling and meeting new people and all that stuff, right? But I love it's what you put into it. So it's like, how do you propel yourself to the next level where you're in the top 1% or whatever the goal is, right? It's these small little simple micro commitments that make a huge impact over time in your business. So I'm trying to do what you said, like the follow-up and everything, yep. like with the people that I'm like I'm trying to spend time with them. Um, so right now, like I've managed successfully with some help to get all my contacts moved into a command, okay. which is pretty big for me because <laughs> that was kind of challenging. Um, but would you recommend because command isn't up and running to go to top producer? Or a follow-up boss, or should I like? How far away are we? See, from we're staying away from command until it's up and running. Yeah, like as we're far just like we I just away. Like, he's plowing through this. Just um, do the edge. I would do something that's free, like the edge. Yeah, sure. Well, well, that's just one of those like. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take for them to kind of iron out the kinks and stuff, the growing pains. We're gonna, our team personally is gonna wait. We have our systems in place and whatever, and that looks great right now. When commands up and running, we'll move over. I would just like Irene said, I wouldn't be spending money on anything. Yeah, I would go like, like I'm just doing it manually for now. Yeah, like yeah. You know, just At one manually. point when I was new, I did Outlook and I did it manually. I was gonna say you mentioned Asana. Pardon? Asana. You mentioned oh, that. Okay, so yeah, that's totally saying, different. Asana yeah, is yeah, kind of like a Trello, yeah. like a yeah. project management. So I'm using Trello. Okay. So I have my exact, but what yep. I'm finding is that I'm just not, like, it's just not working because I'm not working it. And I'll, if I sit down, that's all I'll end up doing. Yeah. I like so what I've done, right? You know, so what I've done is I've actually pulled out the pipeline mm -hmm. and I've created a pipeline within Trello so that I can manage whatever is coming in that way and then can deal with that exactly. No. And hey, it that. doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever your system is that you figure exactly. out that works for you, as yeah. long as you're getting reminders and you have your people category. Like what I like about um, follow-up bosses, we can have hot prospect and nurture yeah. and then leave. So I know, like I can look one day, I just want to look at my hot prospects. And then we can divvy them up by tag. So I know people that are on my yard sale, I can just put in the tag and they'll just pull up those people. So I like to be able to categorize. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So whatever it is, whatever system you really want to know who your top prop, your top people are, like your A's, B's, C's, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's Trello. I, I've used Trello before. We used to keep our listings in there, like they do. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Before. yeah. Now we use Asana. That's kind of where we do like our checklists and stuff. And it's how I communicate with my yeah, um, assistants. We can have like Six. business to do, <laughs> personal, and we can do reminders. So yeah. Very much like I love Trello. Yeah. yeah. Trello has a free option though, so that's nice. Like, yeah, exactly. That's not a good idea. Trello has a free option to you get it too. I use Trello team. for like, even like organization of my house. Yeah. Like, like this? Renovations that need to be done, yeah. update, like you can, whatever it is, or if you're looking at a trip, you can. So it's an attachment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I use it for different things. But you just, you know, there's so many apps nowadays. 
caught up just here. The ones that uh, yeah. I don't know. Whatever works for you, because you can get a double from both. There's just way too many options yes. nowadays. Well, it can turn into one of those make work projects where you spend yeah, exactly. an hour just setting it up, but yeah. you're not accomplishing anything. Yeah, exactly. Any questions, guys? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you.